Hi everybody, I'm Mark Hobie, Producing Artistic Director here at Paper Mill Playhouse, and I want to welcome you to Director's Notes. I'm so happy to have with us a familiar face, <laughs> Casey Hushin, who's our director for A Jolly Holiday, celebrating Disney's Broadway hits. Thank you, Mark. I'm so happy to be back here. Well, you're kind of moving in. <laughs> I mean, many of our audience members may recall that uh, you directed one of our digital captures last year, Beehive. Yes, and it was such a great experience on all levels, but it's so wonderful to now be in the theater with live audiences coming back. The energy is so completely different and so exciting. That digital experience was amazing. It was, was amazing. I was so happy for, with it. It was amazing for all of us, turning the whole theater kind of into a film studio. Yes. And directing a show in a little bit of a different sense, capturing it for the camera um, uh, instead of for a live audience. Yeah, I didn't mind the amount of control of being <laughs> able to go back and edit and be like, this one, that one, that one. And having that monitor with all the different views, and like right. it was fascinating, but there's nothing like the experience of a brand new musical right. and opening up the doors and people coming back inside the theater. It's just the best. It is so exciting. And this is a brand new musical, and we should talk a little bit about how this all came to be. I mean. We had approached Disney with the idea of doing um, a holiday presentation of some of their music, and um, we met very quickly with a good friend of yours and has now become a very close friend of mine, Jeff Lee, yes. on the staff at Disney, and Ann Court yes. and Andrew Flatt, who um, were working with us to create this show. Um, and I think we had positioned it as a, a, a holiday show, right? But we learned very quickly. <laughs> did. We didn't quite have the holiday music right. in the Disney catalog. So the conversation became, how can we create this holiday experience and create a holiday show with this incredible catalog of Disney's greatest hits? But of course, they're not holiday specific. It was so funny because I remember talking about it. And Jeff is kind of the guru of that catalog. Yes. And saying, uh, thinking, well, there must be a Disney show that's holiday themed and there's not. Yes. So that was the challenge and it went through a bunch of iterations this yes. idea. And Jeff Lee came up with a really great idea. We were really looking for a hook of a way to kind of bring this whole evening together and we had chosen the songs that we wanted and the mm -hmm. moments we wanted in the show and he had this brilliant suggestion of threading the evening through with this concept of a tree decorating party in which the ornaments would represent kind of each module of the shows. Right. And I feel like that one idea gave such a, a fantastic anchor to the evening of just some a simple through line that we could build this great evening of music around. Right. And then the catalog, uh, well the show, the, the, there's Disney music that's celebrated in film and this is really celebrating the Disney on Broadway catalog. That's right. So, um, and it, there's a little bit of a stretch to that. Um, mm -hmm. But it's music that's from their theatrical presentations, yes. right? So, but even that is vast. Yes, and right? I remember us sitting in your office and going through, there are so many fantastic songs that it is, it, the challenge becomes really whittling it down to the greatest of the greatest hits. Right, and I don't even know if I could name I mean, it started, their uh, experience on Broadway with Disney started with Beauty and the Beast. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know them in order, but there was Tarzan and Aida, Lion King, Little which Mermaid. is still running, The Little Mermaid, Frozen. Um, and then there were shows that were developed for the stage, but still highly successful, but may not have made it to Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, High School Musical was yes. one that was in the discussion. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Which got its start as part of this, you know, to talk about also the, I think the theme of this whole experience for me, and I bet you would agree, has been about collaborations and partnerships. Yes, of absolutely. All of these entities. Like, I had the great experience of working with Paper Mill for the first time on Beehive, which I just loved in terms of how it felt to work here and be supported and build these relationships. And then I was fortunate enough also to work with Disney as a resident director on Aladdin. So in my life, these two partnerships coming together and creating this show was so meaningful. But the theme of partnership is everywhere around this. Really with your is. relation to Paper Mill's history with Disney is, I mean, it's so rich. And to watch all of that come together and see even some of the cast members who originated roles in shows that began here and went on to Broadway, yeah. it's so meaningful. And you feel that in the show and in the process. I think it, you're exactly right. I mean, I, I really value the relationship 
um, between Disney Theatrical and Paper Mill. And it's been long over many years and many projects. We're very honored and grateful to have worked with them on so many projects. High School Musical was the first one that we were licensed uh, the rights to, and then we launched Newsies, which is part of the discussion for tonight, which yes. went on to great success on Broadway and on tour. But we've worked on, I think, I keep getting it wrong, it's seven Disney musicals have been on our stage. Wow. Um, including this one, which is just thrilling. And, you know, a, a huge part of what is uh, at the heart of what we do at Paper Mill is family entertainment, right? We want people to come, all the generations of the family, the grandparents, the parents, the kids, mm -hmm. the, the younger ones. And I, I think there's no better partner than Disney and Disney Theatrical for that. So yes, true. to be able to celebrate not only this incredible catalog of music, but also the relationship with Disney, amazing. The history, yeah. yeah, there's so much history in all of the relationships, but I do think you feel that in the fabric of the show. This could just be me, but I think it was created with such love and such respect for the catalog, the material, the relationships, the actors that are in the show have mm -hmm. relationships to the material, to Paper Mill, to Disney. Um, you just feel that love and respect and years of history in the show, and it's really delightful. It's amazing. And we should talk a little bit first about your collaborators on the show. So yes. we, have one, we have a wonderful mutual friend who is working as choreographer. Yes, and he was brand new to me. So Kenny Ingram is the choreographer of this show, and I am eternally grateful to Mark Hovey for bringing him into my life. Well, I've known Kenny for 36 years, so he's one of my oldest and dearest friends. And um, uh, in fact, he and I did our first show together here at Paper Mill, Dream Girls, way, way back. I didn't know that. Yeah, I directed and he choreographed. That was the first show I ever worked on here at Paper Mill. Wow. So Kenny and I have that much history personally and professionally and talk about collaborations here at Paper Mill. So I was happy to introduce him to the project or to you, but Disney already knew him. Yes. He was on their radar. They because, recommended him as well. Yes, and he was uh, a member of the uh, company of the Lion King for, I think, Ten years, eight to ten years, a really long time. So that's an amazing He is wonderful yeah. too. And he both, you know, sometimes you meet, we have all these different collaborating partners and different mm -hmm. personalities that you work with, but sometimes you meet someone and you just have this, a click. And from the second Kenny and I met, we just laugh and and support each other. But it all, we both come from a place of trying to find the joy in the experience, right. in the rehearsal process, even in the challenges. We try to keep a sense of humor alive in the room and find the joy in all of it, and immediately that was so clear upon yeah. meeting Kenny, and he's such a pro. Yeah. You know, he's just a complete pleasure. I told you, the energy he brings into any room is just <laughs> thrilling and exciting and positive yep. and so fun. And when we went about um, trying to find the company for the show, we worked closely together, again, with our partners yes. at Disney, because it was important, I think, uh, to find uh, people who could handle this incredible material. It's challenging. It's a big thing. It is I mean, these are epic songs, yeah, like incredible it, Alan Menken ballads, and they require like spectacular stunt singers. It is every 11 o'clock number <laughs> in every Disney show in, packed in two hours on the Paramount it's stage, true. right? It's and true. we have five cast members. Yes. And we worked really hard, I think, you, Jeff Lee, the Disney company, and the Paper Mill team to find an incredible mix of people who had a history, some to Disney, mm -hmm. some to Paper Mill, and some to both. Yes. Right? So why don't you talk about who those fabulous five yep. are? So we have Kara Lindsay with us, who originated the role of Catherine here in Newsies, right. which mm -hmm. is amazing. Um, Dan DeLuca, who is also, I know his Disney history is also with Newsies. Yeah, he was and the Jack on the tour, yep. the national tour. Major Attaway, who is a genie in Aladdin, which is where I met Major. Kissy Simmons, who was a Nala in Lion King for nine years, I believe, if so I'm correct she, about that statistic. Yeah, and so she and Kenny had a relationship yes. coming in, too. That's interesting. Yeah, yep. yeah. And then Jared Muse, who, wh what I love about this is we have people who, you know, speaking to our theme of partnership and collaboration and family, people who are part of the Disney family, the Paper Mill family, both, and or someone like Jaron Muse, who is newer to both. You had right. a little bit of history with Jaron, but it's exciting, too, to bring and discover new talent and new family members right. and bring them into the experience, and he's just remarkable. They're all just magnificent. Yeah, Jaron was a member of our company of Sister Act that was in rehearsal when the pandemic hit and closed, so we really only had worked with him for a week. But um, we were big fans of him, and when we were looking for, he was kind of the last piece of the puzzle yes. that came together, right? Kara, we all knew she was on board right away, and Kissy right away, too. She's 
uh, Disney family. And then we added Major, who mm -hmm. you had that close relationship with it, and Dan. But we were looking for that fifth cast member who, and we were asking a lot mm -hmm. to be a leading man, to yes. also be a tap dancer, to um, add this vocal strength, this, you know, yes. another high vocal powerhouse. And it was a bit of a matrix figuring out, because what we also wanted was, you know, you spend this evening, this holiday party, the night feels very much like a party and a yeah. celebration, and you're going to spend the evening with these five personalities. So we wanted five completely different colors and energies, vivid, different, distinct people that would bring completely different energies to the table. And I really feel like we have that, like, I, think I am thrilled so across the board with who they are. I agree. I think it's so successful. I'm talking about collaboration and people that we both know. We needed to bring on a book writer who was going to sort of weave these songs together. And it was a great idea to take personal uh, moments from our cast members, mm -hmm. their actual experiences either at Paper Mill or with Disney Theatrical or both, and weave them into a book for the evening that made it a cohesive event. That's right. So you knew someone. Yes, and it was so funny. Again, this is like, I swear it's such a recurring theme on this show. I recommended Sandy Rustin, who is a great personal friend of mine and a brilliant writer, and we collaborated together on Clue, which is coming, coming to Paper up. Mill. Um, and I believe Mark, Disney, and myself all recommended Sandy at the same time all, in different emails, different communication. We all came to that same name at the same time. And Sandy had been working, unbeknownst to us, on another project with Disney. And um, I knew Sandy because we attended the same alma mater. I mean, she's many years behind me, but we went to Northwestern University. And when I went back to teach there, she was a student. So that was another crazy collaboration where we all it all came together in, in yeah. sort of one sweep. It does feel like because there's so much heart in the show and process, the people who ended up being a part of this process were really meant to be in the I, room for this one. I, I definitely agree. feel that. And a wonderful design team too, oh my right? God. Um, beautiful, incredible set. Extraordinary. Uh, by Kelly like, it's the holiday the and and the variety you can get out of this beautiful set that yeah. Kelly has conceived to be a bit of, it gives you the warmth and the coziness of being in someone's living room, but yet it's full of holiday magic. Yeah, and magic for sure. Absolute magic. So and that's Kelly Ty's brilliant design. And then Charlie Morrison has something like 6,000 little tiny pixels of light all over. The number's 6, astronomical. 6,500 yeah, individual points of light. And I, we have to give a shout out to the paper mill crew who built yes. and wired all of that by hand on our stage and it is spectacular and it's just the amount of options that they can provide and the cohesion with 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 which the way all work together including matt kraus the sound designer who's right. also from disney family and <laughs> paper mill family um, and sarita fellows who did the costume design for this who was new to me and, and i new think to us. done such a wonderful job and new to paper mill as well so another sort of new member into the family um, bringing a new vision Yes. But jumping into the family unit really beautifully. Yeah, it was a great fit. And we yeah. all enjoy each other. I think in particular this design team, we all have a lot of history working together with Sarita being new yeah. to us. So there's a lot of teasing and a lot of joking, but a lot of um, there's an unspoken sort of a, a language that we all speak together as a team that's just really rewarding and special to be around. I really treasure working with this group. A couple of other quick people, Jared Janice, who yes. makes the ladies look beautiful with their hair, but we got to talk about the music team. Because oh my God, do we ever. is about the music. And so many, when you just list those songs, Aida, I mean, the, the shows, Aida, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Little Mermaid, all of those collaborators, but beautifully music directed by another Northwestern alum, <laughs> who I don't even know if you know this, but. Jeffrey Coe is his name. He went to Northwestern and started as a student in our program here. I didn't know that. Yes, he was went through our summer musical theater program. We're not kidding about I, this theme here. I this know. is too much. But amazing arrangements, both both vocally and orchestrally, by the brilliant Jim Abbott. Yeah, right? Jim is spectacular, and I'm so happy to have Jeffrey on this show too because I think within moments it will be hard to get Jeffrey on a show because he is yeah. so talented and he's so wonderful at what he does. And I had just met him on a, another show, Mystic Pizza, and he was he's just brilliant on our show and full of charisma playing on stage and leading the band on stage, which we love. But Jim Abbott, you know, I can't speak to the particulars of his history with Disney, but you just think of him as he is the expert, expert musician on that catalog of music and right. on the history of those. And he just 
pours himself into every note and every orchestration and you feel it you hear it like his work is so spectacular and he's such a good person too but everybody's been really really lovely but you and i were invited back for the opening of the new amsterdam theater in was yes. it the end of july beginning of august yeah i think it was still summer and it was such an honor um it was the first time i'd been in a theater during the pandemic yes. and we were dates yes and you're a great we, date and we were in yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun and um it was a, another concert, not unlike this, of Jim's arrangements and music, and um, we were just blown away by the beauty, um, the way he was able to capture the spirit of these songs and change them up, fresh yes. things. And he's actually written new arrangements. Uh, yeah, there are brand this. new arrangements in this show. And there's a song from Jungle Book that has never been done before, this yeah. brand new arrangement, lots of new things as well. And that's what I would ask you. I know it's impossible, and it's even a line in the show. It's impossible to name your favorite Disney musical because there are so many, and or even name your Dis your favorite Disney song. But name are there a couple of moments that sort of you know pop this out to you? This is tricky. This is like I tell my children, I, I love you all in different ways. Yeah, um, there are so many. Yeah. I find some of the ballads so moving. Me too. But also there's something. It might be my affiliation with Aladdin, but just for the pure joy factor. Friend like me, I, I can never sit still in my chair. It's right. just like rocket fuel of joy. That one always gets to me. But I could probably walk through the whole show and tell you why I love each one in different ways. I agree with you, but it's it's funny that you say that because. Well, of course, Newsies is very yes. close to my heart, which is that whole segment at the end of Act One, because, you know, it's the show that really put Paper Mill on the map of um, sort of launching new musicals mm -hmm. and that it moved to New York and had such success. So that's very special to me. Um, Hunchback is one of my favorite oh. shows of all time. Any project, of any project that I've worked at in my whole career, either as a, a dancer, a performer, director, choreographer, producer, that is at the top of the list. But um, same for me, that Aladdin segment is so full of joy. That's it. And I think a lot of that comes from Major. Yes. Right? And, and his, his true story, which he shares in the show, it's yeah. a little bit of a spoiler. Can well, I share it? Well, it's okay. It? I think, yeah. A little inside info. But, you know, he tells this story of genuinely being at home on the couch in Fort Worth, Texas. And he saw the original genie, James Monroe Iglehart, win a Tony for playing that role. And he said to himself, I'm going to do that someday. And then cut to Major Attaway playing the genie on Broadway in Disney's Aladdin. And he was just wonderful. Yeah. His personality is like the audience. He smiles and the audience is his. And it's so wonderful to see him process that even further now with some distance from it and evolve into the artist that he is now with all yeah. that experience under his belt. He just keeps owning himself more and more. It's a joy to watch. The thing that's exciting, I think, about all of this is that, you know, um, watching Major sort of relive and reinvent that character, as Kara does in Newsies and Dan does as well, and Kissy in the Lion King section, but they also all have to deliver these other songs too, so it gives them a chance to experience other, you know, yes. Disney moments that they might not necessarily um, be cast in or do, but to live them on stage in this night. And yeah. so it is so fun to watch them just love being up there. Yes, right? and just, being with each other. They totally do. But it is, it feels like we were talking about in rehearsal, it feels like the little kid inside of all of us who fell in love with musicals is getting yeah. the opportunity to be in all of these, to be right. like, oh, now I'm in Newsies, and now I'm singing Circle of Life, and there's a real light that comes on in people, and I feel like as you walk through the show, you get a little, you really do get a feel of each of those shows and the energies of the shows right. in these little modules of the shows that you see, but they love inhabiting all the different worlds, you know, going from under the sea to carrying the banner. It's, right, exactly. It's a blast. I also think that the way, um, that the show has woven together and that the music plays out is really exciting too. That, like you said, there's little modules of each of these shows and as I said earlier, kind of the 11 o'clock numbers in every one of those. But the, the movement of the evening is really exciting too. There's um, something really exciting about reliving. We've lived through all of those yes. musicals, right? Yes. And we had some of the Disney team here last night, Thomas Schumacher and Ann Court who it was like a trip down memory lane for them, watching yes. each one of those shows come through the voices of our incredible cast on this show. It's like so personal for yeah. everyone. Like for them, I can't imagine their lives have threaded through with these shows for so many yeah. years, like you and Newsies and all of those stories. And it's personal for the actors to relive their moments. So yeah. it's really interesting to watch everyone's experience with what this music and these shows mean to them individually. And actually my Disney story goes back before Newsies. 
to High School Musical, which I directed here, which was amazing. But it goes back before that because I was actually in Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. Really? Yes. I was the first. I'm still learning about you. <laughs> I was the first replacement after the original cast opened, and I became the pepper shaker <laughs> for a while. And it was one of the most glorious, ex glorious experiences of my life. But even before that, I just remembered this. We had just passed Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and we had so much to be thankful for, all of us, right? But I appeared in the Thanksgiving Day Parade in 1992 in a number from uh, Be Our Guest, Beauty and the Beast, before the Broadway show was even conceived. It, it didn't even open on Broadway. I think you know I'm 94. Googling this the second yes, we're done. You like can I'm find it on YouTube if you look <laughs> really hard. But that's how far back my Disney connection goes wow. too. So anyway, we invite all of you to come and experience this incredible evening of joy, of um, Disney magic, of beautiful music, and we at Paper Mill are so grateful to the entire Disney team and to you and Kenny and your whole crew for bringing such a spectacular production to our stage. Thank you. It's genuinely been a gift to all of us, I think, and yeah. we, that's our hope is that it just gives that gift back to the audience and to people coming back to live theater. We said at the very onset of this yeah. that we wanted it to be a warm, welcoming embrace to people coming back to the theater, and I think it is just that. I I find it hard to believe that anybody could walk out of here not filled with holiday spirit and love and joy and just feeling better about everything. So um, we hope to see you all here at Paper Mill. And thank you, Casey, for joining us. Thank again. you. See you soon.